Okay, so you should know already from the course these facts about genetics. You should know a gene is a section of DNA. You should know one gene codes to make one protein. You should know that every three bases on the gene code to make one amino acid. You should know that the protein could be an enzyme, a hormone, a structural protein, carrier protein, antibodies, all sorts of things. Proteins build everything that you need. And you should also know that the DNA code is universal. It works the same in every living thing. Now, because of that, we can start to think more about genetic modification. So, genetic engineering or genetic modification. What that means is that we can take genes from one organism and transfer them to others. The genes will be read in the same way as they would have been if they were the organism's own genes. The proteins will be manufactured by the cell in the same way that it manufactures all its normal proteins. It's just manufacturing a protein from a different organism that it wouldn't have already had in its DNA. It can be done with all living organisms, from bacteria to plants and animals, and it has some incredible applications and possibilities for the future. Now, a section of DNA, a gene, can be cut out of one species and inserted into another. Now, this new DNA is called recombinant DNA, because it's been recombined. And the organism that receives this new recombinant DNA, we refer to as a transgenic organism. The new organism will manufacture the protein using the DNA as if it was its own. What do you need in order to do this? You need a kind of genetic engineer's toolkit. You need some DNA scissors for snipping DNA apart and cutting bits of DNA out, genes out. And you need some glue so that you can glue the DNA, the gene, into the DNA of the cell that you want. Now, obviously, we don't call them DNA scissors and glue. They have special names. DNA scissors are known as restriction enzymes. They cut DNA at specific points. And DNA glue are actually called DNA ligases that join cut ends of DNA molecules together. You also need something called a vector. Now, a vector is something that is used to transfer DNA into a cell. So all, even though you've cut some DNA out and you've stuck it into some other DNA, you need to get that DNA into a cell somehow. And there's two main ways that we do that. Either we use something called a plasmid, which is a little loop of DNA found inside bacteria. They're easy to remove, and bacteria will take them back in very easily. So you can use them to get DNA into a bacteria. Or we might use viruses. And viruses can insert their DNA into an organism when they infect it. So if we can fiddle with the DNA that's in the virus, it will infect the organism that we want with uh, the DNA that we want, not its own DNA.